Hello, everybody. Today we've got to talk about Ron DeSantis dropping out of this presidential race right before the New Hampshire primary. And while we're here, we're also going to take a final look at what's going to happen tomorrow in the Granite State. But first, I've had a lot going on this past weekend, so I'm a little bit behind in comments and some other things, so I'm going to try to be quicker on this video. But the good news is, tomorrow for the New Hampshire primary, it looks like I'm most likely going to be able to do another live stream. So hopefully you could stop by for that. And let's get to the big news for yesterday. Ron DeSantis has dropped out of this presidential race and endorsed Donald Trump. So I've got an NBC News article, and let's see what's going on with Ron. Well, it's mostly the same thing everybody says once they suspend their campaign. They just do not see a path forward, so there's not much of a point in continuing. He does go on to say, it's clear to me that a majority of Republican primary voters want to give Donald Trump another chance. He goes on to say, he has my endorsement because we can't go back to the old Republican guard of yesteryear, a repackaged form of warmed over corporatism that Nikki Haley represents. For me, this is the most revealing statement because when DeSantis got into the race, it looked like he was going to be the establishment more corporate and donor-friendly alternative. Now, as the months went on, all that kind of went over to Nikki Haley's side and DeSantis sank. So now that he's bowing out, he's not remaining neutral. He's going back to the Trump corner. The guy who initially endorsed him in that Republican primary for governor back in 2018, maybe that completely put him on the map. He probably would have said he would have won anyway. Who knows? But Nikki Haley, who says, I want to say Ron ran a great race. He's been a good governor. We wish him well. It's down to one fella and one lady. She has had a terrible week, in my opinion. It wasn't that long ago she struggled on her answer for the cause of the Civil War. Then we've had a slew of dropouts. Chris Christie, he does not endorse Haley. Then Tim Scott, Vivek Ramaswamy, and now Ron DeSantis. They're all done, and they're all behind Trump. It looks like Nikki Haley is kind of an island at this point. So DeSantis is done. I think he damaged his political image and used up almost all of his political capital. He decided to get into a race that looked like it was going to be an extremely uphill climb against Trump. It turns out it was. But he tried to turn his landslide re-election win for governor into momentum in a Republican primary. It's a very different game, and he quickly fell flat. As soon as Trump went after him, it was pretty much a done deal. DeSantis did stay in it a while. He got in second in Iowa, ahead of Nikki Haley. The polling in New Hampshire, it shows that he has absolutely no chance. So I think it's a good call for Ron to not start to really embarrass himself. So now DeSantis, he's not out of work. He's going to go back to a significant state and be the governor there. He still has almost three years left in office. And he's young. Maybe he runs for the U.S. Senate. He's got time to rebuild his image. Politics is fleeting. So I don't think we've seen or heard the last of DeSantis. Maybe he even jumps back in in 2028. So now that it's down to just Trump and Haley. What does Trump have to say about this? Here's an article from The Hill. It says DeSantis is highly unlikely he will end up in his cabinet. It says here that he told Fox and Friends the bitter rivalry between him and DeSantis was water under the bridge, and he downplayed the prospect of the governor having a role to play in the Trump White House. Now, this is not surprising at all for me. Once DeSantis is off the battlefield and not a rival for Trump anymore, and he got his endorsement, Trump is going to drop all the attacks against DeSantis, just like it did in 2016 with most of those candidates. So as we head into New Hampshire, there were supposed to be two debates. Nikki Haley said she's not going to do it without Donald Trump, so they never happened. Now, given that Ron DeSantis just dropped out, it's probably a good thing he didn't do those debates. But from Nikki Haley's perspective, I do think she should have been in those debates. That would have given her more exposure. She could have went into New Hampshire hot off a debate performance. Maybe that would have helped her by a few more points. Either way, we've got the first in the nation primary tomorrow night. Let's take one last look at the polling. Here's the Republicans. I did look at this a few days ago, but we've had some last minute polls, and this shows Trump in the aggregate ahead by 17 and a half. He's clearing 50% of the vote in all these polls. Nikki Haley is in the mid to high 30s. The support for DeSantis would have to all go into Nikki Haley, and she would have to overperform at this point to actually make it competitive. I do have a community poll on the channel asking what Donald Trump is going to get and what Joe Biden is going to get in their primaries. Vote in those if you haven't done so. But the whole storyline of Nikki Haley surging and possibly being able to to take out Trump in New Hampshire. Unless there's a major upset, it looks like that is not going to happen. Now let's also take one more look at the Democrats. Here we have to remember, Biden is technically not even on the ballot, so there is going to be a write-in campaign. And he's dominating, but it's all about the margins. In these recent polls, it looks like he is clearing 60%, but it's a unique situation. New Hampshire primary voters might hold it against Biden, and they
they might vote for Phillips or Williamson. So Biden is almost certainly going to win. But again, it's all going to be about the margins. So we'll see if the polling lines up. And sometimes I like to take a look at the markets. There's not a lot of point on this one, but we can take a look at the Republican primary. I predicted there. Trump is sailing. He's at 95 cents. Nikki Haley down to seven. If you look at the trend, Haley had a little bit of momentum here last week. Trump got down into the 60s. There was a chance if everything lined up for Haley, she could make it extremely close. Pretty much none of those things lined up for Haley. She does have the governor Chris Sununu endorsement. She has Phil Scott next door, but that's just not going to cut it. So the question for me is, is Haley going to drop out after New Hampshire? Or is she going to try to go through Nevada and then her home state of South Carolina? We shall see what happens. But the last thing I'm going to point out is I think the focus is going to turn to who Donald Trump is going to pick as his running mate. There's a market I'm predicted for it. It's pretty much wide open. The top four are Elise Stefanik, Christy Nome, Tim Scott, and Vivek Ramaswamy. It could be anybody on here, really. A VP pick, I think, is hard to predict, but that's where the focus is going to be. The pick that I think is most likely for a long time has been Tim Scott, but it's really tough to say. There's definitely going to be a lot more excitement with this pick than with Biden selecting a running mate, because that's already pretty much a done deal. So it should be exciting. We're going to follow it, and I'm going to leave it there for now. So assuming there's a live stream, stop by for that, but let me know in the comments. What do you think about DeSantis dropping out and endorsing Trump? What do you think is going to happen to the New Hampshire primary? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.